Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we are so thankful to be able to come together and to study your holy words uh, at this time of COVID, how we can be united in faith, in love for one another, in respect for one another, and certainly in honor of this wonderful book, this joyous book, uh, the Bible, as difficult and intricate and complex and sometimes contradictory, inspiring and life-giving book that it is, we ask your Holy Spirit to join us and to be our teacher, that we would hear the words that we need to be able to better channel your love in the world. Uh, help us read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest these words through the power of your spirit. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So uh, as we know, uh, the same writer who wrote the first three letters, one John, two John, three John, we are considering to be the same one who wrote the gospel of John. Uh, there's debate about these things, but just we'll settle that argument on the outset. Uh, the occasion for these letters, and as we've talked about before, just to remind us, it's been a week, these letters are one, two, and three John, but chronologically, they're not that way. It's second John, third John, one John. Why? Uh, because if you do read uh, second John and first John, there are assumptions made about the presence of so-called heretics, uh, where they are, um, uh, they are there in one letter and in another, they're not, and uh, because they were expelled. And so uh, we want to make sure that we get the letters in the right order, which is why we first did Second John last week, and we're now doing Third John today. So um, what uh, what we see as we approach these is that Second and Third John are, are only one chapter. First John, however, is five chapters, um, and so so we were able to tackle that letter last week. And remember what we found out is. This was addressed not to any one person, but remember he addressed it to uh, the elder woman and her children. Um, mm -hmm. And we basically assumed that that was a metaphor uh, of the, 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 respected, uh, the, the respected lady uh, and her children to be really talking about what now is known as mother church and the church members. And so this was more or less a letter to the church. This one, as we'll see, is to a person. It's definitely to a person, and uh, with some specific instructions, etc. So, with no further ado, let me. Uh, what I've done is I pulled up two versions for us: the New Revised Standard Version, which is the version we typically use, uh, the Anglicans typically use uh, through their Sunday services. Um, it's probably, you know, among in churches where the the clergy has been asked to um, have a graduate degree in theology. This is probably the most common version. Um, and, and so there are a lot of different versions that a lot of different pastors like. This happens to be pretty popular through the, um, the Anglican communion. Um, the Catholics are usually going to read from a Catholic translation, um, one that's been approved. And, and I'm not against any translations at all. I think you should read them all. Uh, but at, for, all, for those of us who studied language, we know it's not an exact science and that different translation boards have certain proclivities and ways of expressing things. So um, I'm going to share my screen here with you all with the New Revised Standard Version. And um, as you can see, it is very short. It, 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 it's, it's 15 verses. And why on God's earth would we want to study this uh, letter to uh, somebody in a certain time, a certain, in a certain place, a guy named Gaius? Uh, well, I think the letter, I think the, we'll let the letter respond to that on its own. Um, as we know as Christians, we're always looking at letters written to other people, um, uh, gospels written to other people, historical accounts written to other people that for some reason is still applicable to where we are. So I wanna remind us that this book may have been written by John to a beloved elder 2000 years ago, but this book can still speak to us today. And so I wanna encourage us to have ears open to listen to what the spirit might be talking to you about today. Uh, we don't study these words just as a historical exercise. We study these words because we believe God is alive and present and interested in, in, you know, uh, in, in, in telling us uh, what happened here, uh, a, a thing or two about, um, about our lives. So um, I would invite you, um, let's see, Mary, why don't we have you read verses one through four? 
and you'll have to unmute. The elder to the beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth. Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health, just as, as it is well with you, with your soul. I'm sorry, I, I had my eyes dilated this morning and I'm still not quite there yet. I was overjoyed. Yeah. I was overjoyed when some friends arrived and testified to your faithfulness to the truth, namely how you walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than this, to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Any word or phrase stick out for people there? <clears throat> I think walking in the truth. Mm -hmm. And in that same vein, faithfulness to the truth, which you would be also walking in the truth, the word faithfulness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How about you, you Pat? That it was a joy to hear their faithfulness in truth. Yeah, yeah, how inspiring one can be to another, right? Yes. What we pick up from this is this idea that, that John is some sort of overseer of probably more than one church, right? Um, and that he is, uh, he is writing to uh, what may be called an elder, a presbyteros. I would get the word Presbyterian from that Greek word. Uh, this is, letter was written in Greek. Um, and so the presbyteros is, is beloved and, and he seems to be uh, mm -hmm. endeared by John uh, and in a place of trust so that the work that they share together of uh, not, just, not just preaching the word of God, but this is about the era when the word Christian will develop. And that word Christian means little Christ's. And, and this is really what our goal is. I like to think that our goal is as much as I, as much as I enjoy speaking for everybody. Um, I, I will say that's my goal is to be a little Jesus, is to be able to stand up for justice like Jesus, to be able to be kind and considerate and loving and, um, and cheerful and encouraging to others uh, as Jesus was. Um, and so he is gonna, this letter, and, and I'll mention this again because we talked about last week, is very much in keeping with the, uh, the outline of a typical letter of this type that we would have found in antiquity. Um, I, I, have, um, I, I have such a copy. Uh, here is one uh, dating from the second or third century and discovered in, in Egypt. And it's gonna be a very parallel form to what we're gonna hear here. Irenaeus to Apollinarius, his dearest brother, many greetings. I pray continually for your health and I myself am well. I wish you to know that I reached the land on the 6th of the month of Epheus, and we unloaded our cargo on the 18th of the same month, dot, dot, dot. Many salutations to your wife and to Serenus and all who love you each by name, goodbye. And so I read that for you last week and again this week to remind us that uh, there is an outline that was very popular at the time that we're seeing um, emulated here. And so it begins with this greeting. Uh, who is Gaius? Gaius is, is, is the beloved. It's somebody whom he loves. I love him in, in, in person. Not really. I love you in truth. And uh, we share a truth together, which he's going to get, get to. And then, as all of us know, um, uh, a good way to, to start off, Mary, is to just butter up the other person, right? <laughs> Commend them for their hospitality. Uh, so his prayers are that all will go well with you and that you may be in good health, just as we heard mirrored by that other letter from second century Egypt. Uh, and, and I love the fact you picked this out. Uh, the word joy is actually mentioned twice in this Pericope, Pat. Uh, the first is I was overjoyed, right? Um, when some of the friends, some of the brethren, the sistren, remember the New Rise version is going to, um, is going to seek to be uh, gender inclusive. And what I mean by that is... Um, you know, when, when I say, um, uh, or when the scripture says that uh, uh, I bid all men well, um, it doesn't mean he bids women, you know, doom. Uh, what it usually means is that that was the male plural for the word. And we run into that problem. And so the NRSV tries to address that by saying, um, uh, by, by, by saying something's more inclusive. So that I wish you all well, not just the brethren, 
or or the sister. And even though in the Greek it may be rendered that way, so that's what what uh, translation boards do all the time. They've got to make these decisions. So verse three says, "I was overjoyed when some of the friends, some of the brothers, some of the sisters in Christ arrived and testified to your faithfulness to the truth." And what do you think they said? Um, how, what, what what would a testimony be um, uh, regarding their faithfulness to the truth? living by the word that was sent from god yeah and what would that life look like honesty okay helping one another being sincere in words yeah. being able to uh, extend a hand uh, feed it would also to me it means being an example of mm -hmm. what what i believe or what i say i believe yeah 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 it gets back to that that word conscientious um that you, you spoke of earlier um one of the things i think is when we look at first second and third john and i asked you this at the very beginning hey um what word comes to mind when you hear of these letters and you all said the word love um this is what is at the heart of the message that john is preaching through these three books and so when he talks about um, their faith, he is talking about it in a way that defines love as a sacrificial giving of oneself for the benefit of others. A sacrificial giving of oneself for the benefit of others. Uh, we throw that word around love all the time, at least I do. Hey, love you, love you, love you, mean it, you know. But the, the idea is that this is a serious sacrificial giving of oneself for the benefit of others. And one of the best things about that kind of love, you guys, is that the more we exercise it, the better we feel. Um, we feel very contented. Um, the many studies will say the most contented we feel is when we're in loving relationships, when we have somebody to love and somebody, has some, and somebody else has somebody to love too. So um, verse three, I was overjoyed when some of the friends arrived and testified to your faithfulness to the truth. The bedrock of that faithfulness is going to be love that they are going to be faithful to a God who they believe loves them, who they believe uh, loves humans so much that God is not anonymous and far off, which is how other religions of the time preached God to be. What is the character of God? God is up there judging you, offer us some sacrifices, be good, or God's going to come down and crush you. It was this whole sense of retribution that how I... Um, how faithful I am at church going, if you could use that word back then, uh, was a definite uh, indicator of how well your life was going to go. And so Jesus and the message of the gospel is very different than that. Um, this does not have a performance clause on it. God's love for you and me is a covenant and not a contract, meaning that no matter how I behave, God's going to love me. Uh, God is never going to give up on me. Remember the end of Romans 8. That, that there's, you know, high nor low, you know, uh, depth nor height, uh, you know, God is never going to stop loving us. And there is no end to the love that God has for us. God is not going to give up on us. We might give up on God. We might choose to go another direction, but that's not God's love for us. And I, I get into that because that's really at the bedmark, at the bedrock of what it means to be, to, 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 to faithfulness to the truth. Because love is what is going to um, uh, make this whole thing work. I don't see Christianity working and promulgating over time unless there's a real sense of sacrificial love. And Christians, you look at how fast Christianity spread. Um, it was a, it's amazing when you look at the history and the number of people affected by this. I mean, it went from being persecuted and condemned by the Roman government in the first century, which is when these letters were written, to two centuries later, by the year you know, 300, 311, um, the, the head of the entire Roman Empire, which has done nothing but get bigger during that time, has actually legalized Christianity. And in 387, it will be made the legal religion of the Roman Empire, the biggest player of the time. So it goes from worst to first in just a couple centuries. And why? It is this sense of love. Now, I will, I will argue that when we see states and governments wanting to back it, we have to suspect ulterior motives. And maybe there are ways to keep people in line and to punish people and to run society, as we found out um, as the church evolved. And 
certainly this leads to great reforms throughout time, the, the great reformation of of the year 1000 when the Orthodox split, the great reformation of 1500 when the Protestants split, all had to do with this sense of, of, of corruption in the church. And many times that corruption uh, was rooted in its, um, in, in, in its uh, marriage with the state or with the government, because we can never forget that God's government is different than man's government, than human's government. So anyway, I go off on that riff because I think it's really important for us to understand what's at the heart of faithfulness and truth when John speaks about it, namely how you walk in the truth. How do we walk in the truth, Jane? How do we walk in? Is it, is it, is, is it because we argue well and we can win debates? I doubt it. Yeah. Uh, no, it's because, um, well, I think it's, it all boils down to being guided by allowing ourselves to be guided by the inward witness of the Holy Spirit. And um, as you said, so importantly, walking in love. Yeah, and uh, I would also say that your ability to win an argument doesn't mean you have the truth. That's right. You know, that's if you've ever right. been in a debating society, uh, you'll see many times that, that great, great debaters are often arguing the most illogical point, right? <laughs> They're convincing people of something that's not true. So your ability to convince is not. And, and so the, the best way that we can convince uh, I mean, what is, what is, what's the gospel say? You'll know we're Christians by our ability to argue. Mm. No. By our love. By our love, yeah. Yeah. And so this gets to be the heart because that wins any argument. Mm -hmm. You know, put a flower in the gun barrel, right? What, what are you going to do when you refuse to fight back? And so, so we, we hear then, this starts off on a good note, doesn't it? That, that um, he's writing it to Gaius, somebody he loves in truth. Obviously, great to, great to hear from him uh, or, or great to write to him, I should say. And, um, and we hear what he's praying for him. And what I like about hearing about these letters, when I hear how John is praying, that gives me an idea of what I can pray for. Beloved, I pray that. Oh, okay, he's praying that for somebody else. He's a very godly person. How might I incorporate some of that into how I pray for others? I'm going to pray that all would go well with you, that you may be in good health, and, and it is well with your soul. That can be something that we can meditate on what does it mean to be good for your soul like when is it kitty don't they say that you're only as happy as your least happy child probably <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure mm -hmm. yeah but but this is <coughs> the sense that um you know what is it, it it's it's more than physical health um, yeah. it's more than the ability it's it's this sense of of, of peace and we get we rub up against this word um, which is so big in the bible uh it called shalom and this is this this really deep hebrew word that 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 means it is well with your soul right so that we would have this shalom uh and what does it mean you know to to wish somebody that and 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 because we don't want our words to be that detracted from you know our our actions how do we live so that we might bring that peace to others it's a good question how yeah. am what i doing today how is what i'm doing today actually bringing peace to others um and and that's when we that's when we can find a lot of things that we do every day aren't bringing peace to our brothers many of us so shocked at 9 11 what you mean everybody doesn't love us no there's probably something you're unconsciously doing that is supporting something that's got a burr under somebody's saddle right um, and yeah. so that's why we have to always walk in humility and always be ready to look at ourselves, ready to back down. Um, it's so important. You guys may, may notice in my sermons, most of the time I, I use the third person, um, uh, the second person inclusive, we, I, I don't always say you, or I, maybe I'll say I more, but I rarely use you. I'd much rather use we, because that's, that, that, that opens myself up to humility. When I say we need to work on this or, or we, we are called this way. Um, I think it's a we world when it comes to following Jesus. Yeah. So um, pray that as well with your soul. This is a good thing to pray for those we love and those we, we pray for, that it would be well with their soul. Um, even, you know, do you guys get, you know, I, I don't know, I, I guess being a preacher, I get asked, you know, which football team are you going to pray for in the Super Bowl, right? <laughs> Um, and, and, and the idea is, you know what, I'm just going to pray it's going to be good for their soul. You know, it's not a cop out, but, um, 
you know, probably both teams are praying to win. And, and I, I pray that it's fun, that it's fair. Uh, but, but really, I pray for something deeper than, than a football game. Uh, I quoted a book not too long ago, uh, written by a man who uh, was reflecting on his final season with his uh, basketball team at the Citadel. Uh, and it was about, about the benefits of losing, right? Um, you, you learn so much more when you fail. Uh, you, you, you get so much more insight uh, that the winners just don't get. And so I'm not saying go fail. Um, mm. But what I am saying is that when we pray that it would be well with your soul, uh, what I'm praying for is win or lose, you would find the peace to deal with them both. Uh, because as we know from watching the, uh, any guys ever watch that franchise on the, the, the Real Housewives of such and such, uh, where they take these, these women who, who have a lot of money and, and, and they just seem to be getting in cat fights with one another. And isn't, it, isn't money supposed to solve those things, um, <laughs> right? Uh, so so what, what we need is we need peace in the soul. Uh, not another Gucci purse, not another Ferrari, but we need peace in our soul, right? Mm -hmm. Finding good ways to out offload that anxiety. I'm not, I, I, I'm a fan of anxiety. It gets me going in the morning. I'm a fan of fear, but too much of it. Uh, what's the saying I love? I, I, I think it's, uh, it's Elizabeth Gilbert who says, you know, uh, definitely, um, you know, uh, uh, keep fear in the car, uh, but put fear in the back seat and don't let it ever have control over the radio station, right? So that you, you we're passengers in the car with our anxiety, with our fears, but we're not letting it dominate us. And we're, we're asking God to help regulate that. So anyway, verse three, I was overjoyed when some of the friends, some of the brother and sister arrived and testified to what we talked about is faithfulness to the truth and that is sacrificial love. Um, and namely how you walk in truth. Wouldn't it be great for somebody to say, gosh, I looked around and you really walk in truth. Um, I have no greater joy than this to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Did any of you, you know, I, I posted that kind of link to that TV show that I was in uh, that came out Sunday. Did anybody watch that by, by any uh, uh, stretch? Uh, I've got to go see the link because I didn't know what time it was going to be on. It's like Netflix. If you just go there and you can hit play and you can watch it anytime. Okay. So it's the streaming version. It's not it's the a regular streaming version. Exactly. Okay. exactly. Good. I'll have to go. So. It's on the website. Uh, I mean, on the face. On yeah, our just page. go to Discovery Plus and you can get a seven day trial to, 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 um, and I'm not bringing that up because I want you to watch it. I'm bringing that up because there's a character in there that I want to talk about. And this uh -huh. is one of the most godly persons I've ever been in the presence of in my life. This woman sat next to me in this talk show and her backstory, I'm not going to go into great detail, but she married somebody who turned out to be less than ideal and who had uh, uh, used violence uh, and intimidation and, um, and, uh, and, and uh, it killed this woman's daughter and uh, attacked her and left her for dead. <coughs> OK, and this is a woman who once he left, picked herself up off the floor and in a bloody mess, walked to the police station down the street. OK, and so she not only did that, but she did that as an incredibly devout Christian, somebody who uh, stayed with her marriage because she was told that's what you're supposed to do. Somebody who um, uh, who uh, uh, refused when he said when he was beating her up to say, I'm your God, I'm your God. She said, no. I have one God, that's Jesus, you're not him, uh, which made him beat her even more mercilessly. And, and so she got up and I won't, again, I won't go into details because they're, they're, um, you know, they're, uh, they're pretty gruesome, but in, in learning the details, you learn about what an amazing woman this woman was. So if you'll let me leave it there, I will, but she survived this and, uh, and, and, and survived this ordeal and has gotten to a place, she came there soon after because she's such a devout Christian of not speaking badly about her assailant, of, um, of refusing to be judgmental about, um, uh, about uh, you know, how, how she was treated because you know, to, to give you a little bit of the backstory, she's a black woman in a white town and none of the white police officers will respond to her pleas of this guy's beating me up, et cetera, until she shows up at the doorstep looking like that. And to sit next to this woman and hear her talk about her faith in God, that she knew God was with her through the entire time, that her, her um, she, she's not going to speak badly about anybody, but that she's just going to continue to um, seek every day to live deeper in love. That's what gets me from this, this verse here, is no greater joy than this, to hear that my children are walking in the truth. And the truth is, she's right. 
uh, God is her God. <laughs> no human is, is that. And, 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 and the temptation for her to speak badly or to harbor evil thoughts against the police, against her attacker, against her attacker's family, she refuses to do it. And she says, even in that TV show, that, um, that uh, uh, goodness has no place for evil. And I'm going to fill myself with goodness and I have no place for evil in my life. And those of us sitting on that couch were like, you know, our jaws dropped. Finally, the person who's running the talk show said, I've never been in the presence of such great purity and love. And that to me is what John's getting to here. Mm -hmm. That John wants us to walk in such love, in such care. It, it is, believe me, after this round of, 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 of presidential election, it is so easy for us to, to denigrate, demonize, uh, cut off and block those yahoos on the other side of my opinion. But that's not where walking in the truth of love takes us. We have to be uh, loving, caring. Of course, we have to have an opinion. Of course, we have to stand up for what we believe in. But it's really important that no greater joy do I have than this, to hear that my children are walking in love, walking in truth, right? Because love is the truth. So anyway, um, I just, I, I just, you know, can't tell you how, how touched I was to, and everybody in the crew, everybody in that show, when she was done, we were like, and this, this lady, like, I think she cleans, like she's a maid. She cleans rooms for a living. Uh, she teaches Sunday school at her church uh, for the tiny little kids. But she is such a rock hard woman. If they still, she still has, you know, cuts all over her body uh, still to this day. Um, and, and, and yet, what does it mean to walk in love? That woman walked in love. Um, unfortunately, that wasn't the way that this, you know, they should do another story just on that woman's faith because it was really, really amazing. Um, so this next prayer could be here. Um, I think Jane got up. Um, let's see, Pat. I'm did you read the next next one? Oh, okay. Jane, do you want to read this next one? Um, beloved, you do faithfully whatever you do for the friends, even though they are strangers to you. They have testified to your love before the church. You will do well to send them on in a manner worthy of God. For they began their journey for the sake of Christ, accepting no support from non-believers. Therefore, we ought to support such people so that we may become co-workers with the truth. You know, every time this word truth pops up, I, I keep wondering um, if it might not also refer to truth with a capital T. And they just, you know, didn't capitalize it. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting in verse five, um, doing for your friends, even though they are strangers to you. Mm -hmm. Apparently people are passing through and they're giving them hospitality yep. and they showed up as strangers and uh, they become friends. Yeah. They, they're treated as friends. Yeah. Yeah, in this case, talking about Christian friends, uh, we know the long Judeo-Christian uh, history behind uh, caring for those who are not your friends, welcoming the stranger, welcoming the alien, right? Yeah. Um, but this, again, he's, he's referring to what he just said about, um, about uh, the, the, uh, um, uh, the hospitality that was offered. I was, in, you know, again, verse three, I was overjoyed when some of, the, some of you arrived and mm. testified to your faithfulness. Um, anything else strike people here? You know, and now that you mention it, though, that thing, you know, whatever you do for the friends reminds me of Quakers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, they are considered friends and everybody that shows up at their doorstop is a friend they just haven't met before. Mm -hmm. Which mm -hmm. is one of the reasons they were pro-abolitionists, because they were probably one of the biggest religious groups to hide and promote slavery, moving out of slavery. Yeah. Big, rich history in, um, in that. And you're right, it's, it's deeply theologically rooted in who they understand people to be. And you can't use race um, to, to, to declassify or to, 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 um, to treat people this way. Okay. So, but you forget that there's been divisions between peoples for, for forever, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yep, yep. Cain and Abel, right? They had a hard time of it. Um, and I all found the, the words accepting no support from non-believers, which I was beginning to feel 
they were able to distinguish the truth walkers from the non-truth walkers or those who didn't believe in Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's very interesting when you were talking about the era. Yeah. John's era. Um, I'd like to read all the way up to verse eight uh, in this uh, other version, if we could. Um, Kathy, you want to give that a try? And we'll, we'll, we'll let, since we didn't do the first couple of verses, we'll let you do those too. Okay. The pastor to my good friend, Galeus, mm, how truly I love you. We're the best of friends. And I pray for good fortune in everything you do and for your good health, that your everyday affairs prosper as well as your soul. I was most happy when some friends arrived and brought the news that you persist in following the way of truth. There you go, your capital T. Nothing could make me happier than getting reports that my children continue diligently in the way of truth. Dear friend, when you extend hospitality to Christian brothers and sisters, even when they are strangers, you make the faith visible. They've made a full report back to the church here, a message about your love. It is, it's good work you're doing, helping the, these travelers on their way, hospitality worthy of God himself. They set out under the banner of the name and get no help from unbelievers. So they deserve any support we can give them. In providing meals and a bed, we become their companions in spreading the truth. This one reads a little differently, doesn't it? Yeah, I like this <clears throat> version better. Yeah, me too. It's more concrete. Yeah. And, and and how, you know, you show hospitality and promote, you know. Or how you make your faith visible. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that verse four, um, in the other version, it shows up more clearly. But the word of faith, people always use that to say that if your soul is in good shape, that is the foundation of health. So they don't say, I'm praying both for your health and for your soul. They say, get your soul right, and, and that will automatically make you healthy, because that's what they major on. Yeah. I've heard many sermons, you know, using that as a launch point. I'm yeah. sure you have, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this is a big, this makes a big declaration of hospitality, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wonder how God is calling us to be more hospitable. Um, you know, in, in the Middle Eastern culture, in those days, hospitality was the thing. Oh, it absolutely. is still the thing. Let me tell you, you do not walk into a household with Middle Eastern people and not. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something, you know. But I mean, it's different than in the, you know, our culture. It was more highly held up. And, and as you say, it still is. Well, a, a lot of it came from uh, geography. Um, if you when you go out to these places um, in the middle of the desert uh, where water uh, questionable food does uh, questionable um, sandstorm can pop up and all of a sudden you know you might be in great need because you might be in great need it does you really well to treat others with, mm. with great hospitality because there's no saying when you're going to need it uh, when I was out visiting those parts that was a um, that that was a lesson one of our guides taught us um, it, 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 as being the root of of hospitality there. It really had to do with survival. Uh, mm -hmm. You can't like, you, ne you need to be good to folk because it, chances are high, you're gonna be in that position in some, in some day. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know how true that is. Um, I just know that that was how it was explained to me when I was out in those parts, um, that that was really the root of it. Is, it makes it, sense. Yeah, it, it does. Well, um, you didn't have restaurants and Holiday Inns on every corner. I mean, yeah. they took you in or, you know, you. You were they were the holiday inns. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right, Pat. But you know what? And even here, like when 9-11 happened and people got stranded at airports and they couldn't leave. And I mean, there's whole towns that went to airports and just took everybody in because they were stuck in whatever little airport was closest to them. Yeah, there's a whole book on uh, how that happened in Newfoundland. Right. But I mean, it, but it was it was across the world because yeah. they shut air traffic down everywhere yeah so wherever you were that's where you stayed or you went to the nearest my son was in flight school they canceled flight school for the military i mean they just it was done you, you didn't and, leave and so we look at how we um how we are to extend hospitality we want to do so wisely um 
there's been great debate. Should we leave the church unlocked? Let anybody come in who wants to pray. It is a church. Um, and yet at the same time, what's it mean to be wise? Um, the last break in we had was kind of a crazy guy who didn't even take anything. He just kind of broke in. And I think he was hoping to get into an AA meeting that wasn't going on. Um, he kind of wandered out. I mean, I, I think that's more of, of, of why that's there. Um, and I don't like having to lock a church. I'd like to think that people who walk by can come in. I, and I guess it would be different if we were on a high traffic pedestrian, you know, air area, but I mean, our parking lot's bigger than our church. You know, we're definitely a destination, you know, uh, destination for people. Um, but anyway, but this is hospitality and we are in a, and I, I won't say we're in an appropriately cautious age. We're in an overabundance of caution age, uh, which, which I don't necessarily like um, because I think you should have appropriate caution, but I don't think you should have an overabundance of caution. And, you know, unfortunately we, we look at how, uh, how the media influences us and, 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 you know, instead of thinking about the 99 people who will give you a hand, we, we get the news story on the one person who won't. And therefore we think nobody will. Um, so I think you're exactly right though, Kathy. Um, if you walk into the Starbucks and say, oh my God, my wife's having a baby. Here are the keys to my car, take care of it and leave. Your car is probably in good shape, right? I mean, people are, are very likely to help others. Um, but I do think this, this uh, reminds us that hospitality is an important, I would, I would even say Christian virtue, that we are to be a people known for our hospitality, our welcomeness. And that's really hard for churches to do because in churches, you inevitably make friends with people and you see them the next week and you want to catch up with them. And therefore, the person who nobody knows very often is one sitting in the corner drinking their own coffee um, because they don't know anybody. And, um, and it, it, it's always an intentional thing. It's always, you know, whenever I'm shopping, I have to think always, what can I buy for somebody else? How can I be hospitable? How can I be you know, more, more open. It's, it's, I think this, I think this uh, COVID has hurt a lot of us because we can't have people over, you know, we mm -hmm. can't, you know, we got to hand ashes out in baggies. We, we can't hug each other. We can't show the signs of hospitality that we would, we would, I mean, any food we give, we have to give out gift cards. We have to give out packaged food. Can't anything homemade. Right. Um, but anyway, so hospitality, then they're modeling the good by being hospitable. Uh, they're doing it in the banner of Christ. In providing meals and a bed, we become their companions in spreading the truth, right? Um, don't take for granted your very small acts of hospitality. They may be mentioned in the Bible someday, right? Uh, your very small act of hospitality. Um, we ought to support one another. Very different way of rendering these things. So we're going to get down into a couple of people who's, uh, who wants to pronounce that first name? Yeah. Diotrephes. 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 I don't know. He's not here to complain. <laughs> uh, Kitty, do you want to uh, take verses um, uh, verses nine through uh, through twelve? Sure. I have written something to the church, but Diot by Diotrephes, who likes to put himself first, does not <laughs> acknowledge our authority. So if I come, I will call attention to what he is doing in spreading false charges against us. And not content with those charges, he refuses to welcome the friends and even prevents those who want to do so and expels them from the church. Beloved, do not imitate what is evil, but imitate what is good. Whoever does good is from God. Whoever does evil has not seen God. Mm. Everyone has testified favorably about Demetrius. And so has the truth itself. We also testify for him. And you know that our testimony is true. What sticks out for you there? Oh, I think I, that went out. <laughs> don't follow people who aren't welcoming to others and not living quotes the truth. It sounds like this other person, Diotrephes, does not... Oh, who likes to put himself first. Mm -hmm. And that shouldn't be obvious to people. <laughs> so, yeah. you know? That's a tip off right away that he's not living correctly. Mm -hmm. 
this this can be problematic, can it? This this uh, sentence here. Because wasn't, he, seems... wasn't Hitler good to his dog? Yeah, but I like the fact that he says whoever does evil has not seen God. I mean, yeah. it's yes. like he doesn't know which way he should be going. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's not like he says he turned against God. He just right. isn't aware of God. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Whoever does good is from God. Whoever does evil has not seen God. Let's see what uh, Eugene has to say about this. Nine through um, nine through twelve. Earlier, I wrote something along this line to the church, but Diotrephes, <laughs> who loves being in charge, denigrates my counsel. If I come, you can be sure I'll hold him to account for spreading vicious rumors about us. As if that weren't bad enough, he not only refuses hospitality to traveling Christians, but tries to stop others from welcoming them. Worse yet, instead of inviting them in, he throws them out. Friend, don't go along with evil. Model the good. The person who does good does God's work. The person who does evil falsifies God, doesn't know the first thing about God. Everyone has a good word for Demetrius. The truth itself stands up for Demetrius. We concur, and you know we don't hand out our endorsements lightly. <laughs> well, what do you like about that? What word or phrase stands out to you in terms? Yeah, of I just I right? knew that truth was going to be capitalized in Peterson's. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, this whole passage, this whole chapter for me says, be aware of those who speak evil or speaking evil against somebody because the word is worse than sometimes a physical abuse. Okay. It can motivate others to think in that negative line. And I think that's what he's saying here. Uh, the person who does good is does God's work. Right. The person who does evil falsifies God, and evil can be words that are not true, as well as uh, actions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sometimes the words are ten times worse. So, it's for me what I'm saying is, take time to discern what is said, what is done, and how it's done. Okay. Uh, we're getting to the heart of the letter right here, uh, which is, it, it is a letter of encouragement to, to Gaius, right? He flatters him, says really nice things to him at the beginning, right? Um, encourages him, get, holds up the model of, of treating people with hospitality, how important that is. And then he gets to this character, uh, Diotrephes, who... Um, we don't know much about him, but we do know that he's held up as a bad example here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> held as a bad example, who, mm -hmm. as somebody who is not, um, who, who's not treating the friends um, as he should, right? And and who is, um, uh, who loves being in charge? Is that the phrase that uh, mm -hmm. we do? We know. Do you all know people who like being in charge? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. Whether, if you don't do it my way, it's the wrong way. Well, mm -hmm. there are people who like being in charge who are good at it, and people who like being in charge who aren't good at it. And uh, it True. seems <laughs> that Diotrephes is one of those people who likes being in charge. Nothing wrong with like being in charge, uh, but but it it seems to be you know a pejorative statement here. Um, he denigrates the Council of John, right? Another strike against him. Uh, if I come to you, you can be sure I'll hold him to account. Right by spreading these very and and so what's interesting here is that the other letters that we'll see in Paul he's going to get down on people in the church because they have bad unorthodox teaching that doesn't appear to be the case here he's on his case because he's full of himself and he's not treating one another with 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 the hospitality that he should be treating them for so very different and there is some debate among scholars about this um, you know was this lack of of um, respect for John and for the friends or for his brothers and sisters in Christ, was that due to a false uh, and unorthodox belief? Some people say, yeah, that, that's why. And so this guy was part of what we'll read about when we get to first John next week is part of this, this, uh, um, this heresy that usually occasions most of these letters, correct belief, orthodox belief, 
doesn't seem to be the case here. He is holding him up to a, a, a level of conduct, though, that, look, he's spreading vicious rumors about me. He's not being hospitable to the people he's supposed to be hospitable to. Maybe the next stop on the train is an embrace of, unor of, of, of unorthodox teaching. Yeah, we don't I, know. I think also this guy has a character flaw. Goes, and I was thinking that when uh, it depends on what a person's motivation is for wanting to be in charge. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, do they want to be in charge out of ego and, uh, and insecurity? Or do they want to be in charge out of altruism and because they think they can do a good job? Right. Yeah. So well, this, and this guy, this is a guy who wants to put himself first. So, I, you know, I, yeah. Well, doesn't that come back to, I mean, this is modern day text, really. Yeah. Very modern because many good leaders are criticized because it's not done the way the former leader was, did it? Yeah. Or um, he just, as you said, ego. Right. And today we allow many, but John is holding diatrophies to the right thing. John isn't backing away. And oftentimes we do back away from, you know, holding somebody accountable. Yep. There's no consequences. John isn't letting them get by with it. And no. I think that's an important factor as well as walking in love, walking in the truth. It's walking in counseling to hold somebody accountable. Right, 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 right. Is this part of truth? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus held it, you know, people accountable. He, oh, he yeah. never mm -hmm. backed away from it. Mm -hmm. One of the things that's been, and I, I, I want to point this out, I know I'm looking at the clock here. Um, this has really been problematic for some people because whoever does good is from God. Whoever does evil is not seen God. Um, you know, again, you get the idea that there have been some very despicable people who've done very good things. Uh, you get a very mixed bag when you decide that, oh, all uh, um, that whoever does good is from God. Well, I I'll say they're from God as long as they're doing good. <laughs> but when they stop doing good, um, that's what, and so, th so the phraseology here can kind of get us. When we go into Peterson yeah. and he says, um, uh, the person who does evil false falsifies God, doesn't know the first thing about God. And the person who does good does God's work. Uh, that can that can open a few more um, doors for me uh, as I look to accept this. Any other commentary on this? Well, Wouldn't originally that be continuity. Hmm? Continuity. The person who continues to do good work, uphold others. That is the person who has a good relationship with God, who knows yeah. him personally. But mm -hmm. the one who doesn't will eventually be seen for who, what his heart is really like. Yeah. So, I mean, if, uh, if you're talking about witness, if, if you're not doing good, then you're not being true to who God is. You're right. falsifying God. Mm -hmm. But you know that thing about whoever does good is from, from God. If you think about it, Originally, everybody is from God. Yeah. <laughs> and then at, at some point, some, you know, along the way, the world spoils them or whatever, and they diverge. Yeah. No, that's true. That's true. Um, and then let's see, when we jump into, uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, and, and I, I love this. Everybody has testified favorably about Demetrius. And so has the truth itself. We also testify for him. And you know that our testimony is true. Wouldn't you like to have everybody has testified favorably about Kitty? And so the <laughs> truth is tough. What a way to go out in the Bible and see why people name their, their kids Demetrius, right? Um, and then we have our final greetings here. Kathy, do you want to read our final greetings there, 13 through 15? I have much to write to you, but I would rather not write with pen and ink. Instead, I hope to see you soon and we will talk together face to face. Peace to you. The friends send you their greetings. Greet the friends there, each by name. Perfect. Any any observations about that? Boy, sure would be nice if we could talk together face to face. Yeah. You know, it was interesting because I passed out the raffle winnings this week, 
Oh, you and, did? Oh, my gosh. To actually see people. And they all praised, you know, how the program ran. And they were so generous. And a couple of them were going to make more donations because they wanted to do it in, in honor, of, you know, like a couple of, you know, Haiti members that had passed. And, you know, they couldn't yeah. do yeah. that online. And it was just nice because typically when we do that fundraiser we see people that we get together with either they go to haiti with us or they support us and it's once a year and it's like man i haven't seen anybody in so long right. i haven't seen my own kids in two years for some of them yeah yeah so you that want to read that really one kathy plus. sure everyone has a good word for demetrius the truth itself stands up for demetrius we concur and you know we don't hand out endorsements lightly I have a lot more things to tell you, but I'd rather not use pen and ink. I hope to be there soon in person and have, oh, I love that one, a heart-to-heart -heart talk. Mm -hmm. Peace to you. The friends here say hello. Greet our friends there by name. Amen. Amen. And so, oh, like uh, again, a, a typical uh, a goodbye in, in a letter of this era, uh, not too far, uh, not, nothing too unexpected here. Uh, again, great to be called Demetrius. Very good and uh, echoing what we feel at COVID time, that boy, it'd be much better to have the heart to heart. You like that phrase, huh? I do. Yeah. Just and because then, we've been missing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, goodbye, everybody here says hi. Uh, it's interesting how we still say the same things when we say goodbye to people, isn't it? <laughs> well, have any high. of you gone into the bank and found how the tellers want to talk, talk, talk? I mean, and, and that's the, the same thing. It's seeing people face to face. And there are a couple of real talkers at the bank I'm at. <laughs> there you go. They don't get any customers, everybody's online. But I mean, um, you know, it, it, isn't that what we we're just hearing face to face and remembering the, the places that we go and yeah. being a listener for them is the most important thing I think I can do. Oh, yeah. Just let them talk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, any other comments on this this uh, text from here? We're going to be taking up 1 John chapter 1 next time we're together. Um, so a week, uh, week from today. And then, of course, we're going to have this Bible, same Bible study that we just did at 7 o'clock tonight for the people who are working right now. Right. Um, so. um, I do have a theological question. But I have two theological questions. I'll email you. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. I'm, I'm available on email. All right, friends. Well, uh, may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and be with you this day and always. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank Have you. a good Bye. day.